Uh, my name is Anu Mukam, and I work for VMware. So today we're going to talk about three main points, basically the mission of the SIG, uh, the different updates about what we did since the presentation in Detroit, and how to get involved. So the first one is describe what is exactly the SIG. So the Kubernetes infrastructure of SIG is one of the SIG mainly focus on managing and operate the underlying infrastructure that you use by the test infrastructure. So any different IT services used by the community is managed by this SIG. So we go from the different GCP resources to the AWS one and at some point we also operate with things like GitHub and stuff like that. So any DNS requests, any DNS entry, we have to manage them and make sure we ensure we provide those different services to, to the community. So one of the first mission of the SIG, and I'm going to do a little of history here, is basically the Kubernetes project start as a Google project. So in the early days, Kubernetes was mainly developed by uh, Google employees. So they leverage the Google infrastructure to build the entire test infrastructure. Now we have CNCF. Uh, we migrate the Kubernetes project. And uh, when I say migrate the Kubernetes project, basically the code base to GitHub, which is independent and controlled by the community. But it's not the case currently for the underlying infrastructure because for, for a long time, we were using Google resources. So one of the first mission of the SIG, and still the main mission is to migrate all those resources still inside Google. So we have a few bunch of workloads still running inside Google we have to migrate. So this is one of the first mission of the SIG. So we work currently closely with Google and the GCP and for, to be more specific with GCP, to ensure we do a transition from workload inside Google infrastructure to the community infrastructure. So that's the first mission of the SIG. The other mission is basically define policy and trying to enforce around anything related to infrastructure, like how we consume the different, I would say, GCP resources, can we allow people to basically request a DNS entry and do domain delegation to another third party, those kind of things. So it's about policy and governance and policies around infrastructure. That's main responsibility. Also, how we drive consumption in the sense how we make sure we still on the budget. I will come to the budget later. And third, I would say third mission, but it's like an implicit mission. It basically provides report, provide transparency to the community. Basically, what's used in terms of costs, how we present, how we give, ac we give access to any contributor interest to have, uh, to request access to that information. So, because we manage the underlying infrastructure we have to do some collaboration with other SIG. I will pick, for example, SIG release. Basically, SIG release is responsible to do releases either for a major milestone or patch releases. But a release means generate artifact, system packages, and control image binary. So we have to work with them to make sure this is we, are, we need to define where they're supposed to publish all those artifacts and make them accessible to the world because we are an open source project, so we have to make it, we have to make everything public in terms of artifacts. So we work closely with SIG release. And one of the things we have right now is basically, one of the mission is to, like I say, have full ownership of, of anything related to infrastructure. So currently I will pick, for example, the system packages, they are still built and published by Google. So each release in any, yes, 
anytime we cut a release, we build all those artifacts and the system package are basically released by Google. We have to interact with a specific team in, to make sure those packages are signed and published in Google infrastructure for the moment. There were talk about this by the SIG release about what's the roadmap on make sure ownership will be will be transferred to the community infrastructure. Another example is SIG scalability. Basically, we work on scalability tests, make sure they run inside the community infrastructure for a long time. We have, for example, one test running a 5K node cluster inside Google. We had to basically transfer that because it's a massive scale. And that, te that test needs to run every day, at least once every day. So transfer, transfer basically where this test is supposed to run is not the easy task. So we were working with the Google team for a long time. And now we plan to basically extend, I would say the infrastructure to AWS so we can also run, I would say 1K node, 2K node or 5K node on AWS. The one of the benefits is also for I would say cloud providers like AWS or Azure to be able to test it directly with the open source project, the scalability of Kubernetes on their infrastructure. We also work with SIG testing to have full, uh, full ownership of the CI supply chain because currently we still have work, like I say, we still have workloads inside Google we need to transfer and we have to have those relationship with all of the SIG. So we are not a SIG, like some specific, specific SIG, we can't operate by ourselves. We have that relationship with those SIG because they're relying on us to do the work. Everything they do every day rely on the infrastructure we provide. So the first update is basically registry.case.io is GA. We made an announcement eight months ago. We, and we say anyone can use it. Now we want to freeze the old registry. So I would say a little bit of history is basically the first release of, I think the first release of Kubernetes, I would say the container image, we were using a Google own Control registry. And for a long time, we were using that. Now we decide to migrate to a community endpoint. And we released, I think it was around May, registry.case.l. So now this endpoint is shipped to all the version of Kubernetes until 1.22. Uh, so starting 1.22 dot 17, yeah. Every time you basically create a new cluster, you will use the new endpoint. I will kind of explain why we're doing this. So you can check the link and there's an announcement, a blog post explaining why we're doing this. So historically, like I said, we were using case.gci.io. And in this graph, you will see the annual expense of distributed container image for the last year. And that's almost 2 million for a year. On top of 3 million we receive every year from uh, Google. And that's a lot, which means Basically, if we try to do something else, we cannot stop because we don't have enough budget to do the rest. And for a long time, we were, I would say, we were struggling because for, I would say, almost two years since we, we, ha we, we have this endpoint, it's difficult to manage cost or manage infrastructure because having, spending, basically, when we spend, two million on top of three million is difficult to migrate the rest of the workload still in Google infrastructure. It became a struggle. You have to basically push back on requests from the community because we don't have enough budget 
to, let's say, make sure any SIG want to do something specific for the own need. Like we want basically, uh, I remember like SIG nodes will come and ask specific nodes to run confirm and test related to CPU features. We cannot basically provide that because we struggle and we say, oh, we don't have enough budget for you. You might wait until we solve this cost situation. And that's why we have registry.case.io. The other thing we did is to make sure we have our user or company using us is to freeze case.gci.io. So basically starting this month, we don't allow the community to publish new tags for the container image to the old registry. So we enforce and guarantee that any new deployment or basically any upgrade of workload using any sub project of the community will, new, will use the new endpoint. Because unfortunately, we realize over time, not everyone is interested to upgrade. We still have people using the old registry for whatever reason, it's difficult for people. It is difficult or companies slash platform team slash develop team. Developer teams are not interested to upgrade. So we, not, we want to force them to do that. And that's basically, I'm, I, this is directly related to governance and policy enforcement. We establish a policy where we say, we don't allow anyone consuming the, infra the community infrastructure to use a specific resources. We did another thing with Google. Like I say, we rely on Google Teams or the cloud providers to make sure we don't break infrastructure in production because you see it's almost 2 million a year. So that means you have, I would say, infrastructure in production using the community registry. So in order to not break the user, we work with Google to make sure we redirect the traffic from gates.gci.io to the new registry. And we make sure that we download the same image layer. So anytime you, I think now, anytime you're trying to download, I would say, DNS node cache, you will be redirected to the new registry. Without, so your cluster will still working and say you, we'll see the old endpoint, but you'll be redirected to the new one. Basically, the backend storage used by the new registry. And that's to make sure if people cannot upgrade, they are not break, is basically, they are not broken by the freeze of the old registry. And how we did that? In October, AWS announced they, get, they did a donation of three million. So we saw that as an opportunity to extend the infrastructure because the one thing we realized during our walk with Google is basically most of our traffic is coming from AWS infrastructure. So you have, I would say, teams, companies, startups deploying Kubernetes cluster, but not using the managed services. And that in some situations, I think they don't really have the choice because regulation, uh, I would say, yeah, mostly regulation because you have in some countries, you cannot use a cloud provider. So if you want to bet the strategy of infrastructure, you have to use open source tools. So a lot of Kubernetes installer rely on the community infrastructure. So when AWS announced the donation, we saw that as an opportunity to install infrastructure because the bulk of the traffic is coming from AWS. So one idea would be to serve the blobs layer of the different container image directly from S3. And that's what we did. So this graph represents the traffic from k.disha.io signs, I would say, beginning of the year. Uh, you will see on March, around March 30, there's a drop in traffic, and that's match the redirect I was saying, like k 
gates.gcr.io is redirect to register.gates.io. So we don't serve directly Blobs layer from Google. We now serve them from AWS, more specifically S3. So we have a drop of traffic. So we make sure anyone is coming from AWS because we build some lodging in the registry.case.io. Anyone is coming for AWS will, will pull from S3. Our, you will see that signs, yeah, February, for, yeah, February 28, yeah. You have traffic increase and that mostly match the redirect. And most of the traffic is also coming from the REST region because most of the user, most of the infrastructure consuming us is in the US. So this is the current infrastructure of registry.case.io. So anytime that a, I would say, a Docker client or a container runtime it registry.case.io, it would go to a GCLB, basically a Google Load Balancer, to make sure, basically to make sure we have a global load balancer. So we cover basically any requests coming from the entire planet. So we leverage Google infrastructure because the load balancer is global. So from any, any point, I would say from an internet perspective, when you hit the registry.case.io, you will be redirect in a specific GCP region where there's a serverless, uh, I would say a cloud run service, which is a serverless platform that basically will enter, will take your request and identify where to redirect you. If you come from Google, you will be redirected to Artifact Registry. And that's to make sure we keep traffic inside the cloud provider. What I mean that is basically make sure anyone's coming from Google, we stay in Google. From a bandwidth, from a bandwidth perspective, it's interesting also because that minimizes the cost of the egress. And anytime you basically come from, I would say, AWS, or a non-cloud provider, you will be redirected to S3. So if your infrastructure is on, uh, I would say, you have West one from AWS, you will still be in AWS. Because we want to basically maintain the same latency we have with the old registry and also minimize the cost we have. So the entire approach of, the, of this architecture is based on cost optimization. So the tech, there's no, I would say, not really technical point to make that we wanted to basically address the cost problem because spending two millions on just egress is a lot for an open source project. I mean, I don't think there's, maybe the Linux kernel project, yeah, they use Fastly, so they don't have a cost problem, but I don't think you will see something like that in other open source project. So, the entire infrastructure here is cost, drive run, and at some point we became FinOps expert. So another update is Artifact Case.io. Basically, this is a endpoint focused on serving KOps binaries and Cryto binaries because also KOps is a one of the sub project inside the community acting as one of the first Kubernetes installer on AWS and also GCP. One of the, I would say, one of the first Kubernetes installer for a cloud provider. And for a long time, we have a lot of infrastructure use, people using that. I used to use this project to deploy a Kubernetes cluster on AWS. And we realized that we also have a cost problem here, where we also have the same problem where there's an issue with egress related to chaos, and we have to migrate. So we leverage. So we have, I would say, 
a global problem with egress because somehow it's a metric of the success of the communities project. We say people adopt that, people use that, but that success as a cost, we have to pay for that. So we are at risk of basically be able to render infrastructure for 2023, because if we run out of budget, we might shut down the infrastructure accidentally. So it's a big risk. So with donation coming from different cloud providers, we leverage that and we say, okay, we're gonna move artifact is of IO to S3. And you see in the graph here, you see basically uh, since February 2020, again, yeah, February 28, we did a transition. Uh, we have like, we serve almost, I would say almost 12 terabytes per day. Almost, I would say, if I pick just one region, one region is nine, nine terabytes and the rest is three terabytes per region. We beyond, I think we, we pass 10 terabytes per day. That's a lot and someone has to pay for it. So the idea is to basically, okay, if we want to be able to serve anyone making a bet on us, we need to leverage any feature possible or any billing optimization from cloud providers to make that happen. And that's why we trying to transfer specific artifacts from one cloud provider to another one. So those are basically the main update since Detroit. We've been be focusing on address cost problem. And the next thing is, are we gonna continue as a SIG? So we're working on specific company, mostly CNTF members like Ubermatic to basically extend the infrastructure. I would say the C infrastructure to AWS leverage that donation. So we have a multi-cloud approach related to CI. It's kind of dog footing because we also want to make a point about basically a Kubernetes project is capable to leverage different cloud provider to make sure we can provide CI for the community. And community in the sense that it's not only about the Kubernetes project, but also any open source project in the CNCF landscape. Because yes, Kubernetes is a project, but we also work for other CNCF project, Contonergy, for example. I know we have like performance tests. We went on our CI to make sure there's a compatibility between Kate and Contonergy. I think we also have a, the same conversation with Cryo at some point. So it's not only about us, it's also about basically the CNC and landscape. Because a lot of projects are based on Kubernetes. So how we make sure we support all of those projects if they come to us and there's a need to ensure compatibility or conformance. Other than working with CNC bus, we also work with basically third parties like Fastly, to basically get access to different services. Firstly, well, in the future, and I think this year, we talk to them, they will provide CD and services to make sure we can distribute different um, artifacts generated by the community. So if anyone want to, want to be involved, we have a bi-weekly meeting around uh, 10 p.m. Central East time, Central time and 4 p.m. East time. There's a charter you can check. Uh, we have a Slack channel, a GitHub repo where we gather all our issues and we have a mailing list. Is there any question? Hey, uh, quick question. So one aspect of the Kubernetes infra um, is the Slack, Kubernetes Slack, yeah. and there's a moderator bot for it, which um, 
has been logging every message uh, in full um, back to Google Storage, so really kind of wasteful. Um, so I fixed that, but it still needs to be redeployed. Is that something that I can help with, or, or like how does that get done? Oh, okay. So in that case, in that case, we should wish to see contributors, see contributor experience because they have full ownership of moderation on the different pla communication platform. So what we do as a SIG is we provide an infrastructure where you can deploy workloads for a specific SIG. And the responsibility is shared at some point, but if you want to basically improve, I would say this specific tooling, you should reach to the technical lead of SIG Contribux. Yeah. Any other question? Uh, I got one question. Yep. <clears throat> um, uh, currently, you're leveraging uh, AWS. Yes. Uh, and that's just one party. Why not leveraging all cloud providers? So, not, if. Not, yeah, okay. Uh, your question is we currently use GCP and AWS. Yeah. Why not use, for example, Azure or Ads in a Cloud? Because. I will, I will answer your question in, with two parts. The first part is, I'm a signature, so by definition, I'm a community server. So, I, and the project is not a legal entity. So we rely on CNCF to basically interact with all those cloud providers. And one of the, I will not say an issue, but more like, we cannot go talk to a cloud provider directly and say we want to use them. So they, I mentioned something during my talk is basically we rely on donation. Mm -hmm. So that's what's happening. So basically GCP donated 9 million um, three years ago to basically bootstrap the infrastructure. AWS donated 3 million for this year. So the intent is talk to cloud providers basically talk to cloud providers and say, we would like to extend the C infrastructure to your cloud, inside your cloud provider. So how this is work. So we need to not directly talk to them, but express, I will, I will not say the need, but basically the, the expectation we can run on specific cloud providers. Like, we can talk to any cloud provider, we can reach out to any cloud provider and say, oh, we want to run to you. But the thing is, like, we rely on donations. So yeah. we need to be independent. We need to be independent. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. So if you basically know a cloud provider willing to donate resources, uh, CNCF has a credit program where you can basically donate that. We will interact with CNCF and we will leverage your donation. Mm -hmm. That's how. That's the overall process. Any question? And I think that's it. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs>